In this video, I'm going to show you how to read a text file um, line by line and do some data or some statistics on the data. What I've got here is a simple file full of baseball statistics. I am understanding that the first column is the player number, second column is the number of at-bats, third column is the number of hits, last column is the number of walks. Um, row 5 is a bad player. It's going to cause an error and we need to pick that up. Um, what we're going to do is going to read through this line by line and character by character. This method will only work if your file is as well structured as this one is. If you have different length lines, different number of spaces, you have to choose a different path. Again, this particular method will only work if your data is beautifully structured, which in reality only happens if you do it. All right, so I've got my basic setup here. Uh, I'm going to need to add a pan include. for file stream. You could also look like O stream, A stream, but F stream will give me the file stream for input and output. I'm going to do all this in main, although I could create methods for these. I'm going to create a variable called I have stream fin. Um, fin for me is file in. Looks like cn and it will work the same way which is why I use file in. Other people use fstream in, in file, in stream, various variables. I just like fin. I've been doing it for about 20 years this way. Got some variables I need. And then a double batting average. Whenever you read from a file, you have the same basic steps, and this is in every language. You want to open the file. You want to make sure the file open. If not, die. Or rather, stop the program. It's a bit harsh, you know. You can't open the file, die. No, just stop your program, or fix it somehow. It's simplest in this case just to stop the program. Then you want to read the file. You want to do something with the contents, and then you want to close the file. Every programming environment, the exact same logic. C, C++, Java, C Sharp, that's what you do. Okay, so I'm going to open the file. I'll do so with... The assumption here is the file is in the same folder. If it wasn't in the same folder, you'd have to do this. Create a path to it with double backslashes. Now check that open. I'll deal with if statements. There's several ways to do this. I don't need the at sign. Fin that is open returns true. If it's not open, I'm gonna quit. It's always good practice to say which file didn't open. There might be a time where your program is working with seven or eight different files. You don't want to just say file didn't open. You want to say which file did not. And then return one. Um, by default, these things return zero. Any non-zero return is an error. And you can define what the error numbers mean. Now, do something smart for yourself. Close your file. If you don't, you'll forget. And it won't be a really big issue on reading the file, but when you start to write out the file, the first time the program works, the second time it won't. 
until you swear a lot, close Visual Studio, reopen Visual Studio, then you'll let it work again. Then it won't work again until you swear, close Visual Studio, and reopen it. So just remember to close the file and do that real early on. Now I like to test to make sure that I haven't done something stupid with my file. So I do a quick run and nothing happened. That tells me I opened it. If I um, had screwed up the spelling of that file, I get my error message. So I know my, my test works. I know my file open. So I'm going to walk through it. There are a variety of ways to do this. I'm going to do it uh, basically column by column. So I'm going to say while not fin.eof. EOF is end of file. So while I'm not at the end of file, do this. And fin works just like cn. So I can fin each one of these values right in. So remember with C and I can do C in to multiple variables separated by a space. Same thing here. I got player number at bats hits walks. So I'm gonna say fin And again, because I'm paranoid, I'm going to verify that the thing opened. And I read it. And I get my numbers back. So I get back 21, 42, 66, 99. I missed 15 somewhere. Oh, there it is. It just had a bad scroll. So 15, 21, 42, 66, 99. So I know that my file opened, I know that I was capable of reading it, and I correctly read that first column. If you're really paranoid, which is always a good thing when you're learning how to program, take a look at as much stuff as you want. Hello? There it is. 20, 100, 300, 400, and... I compare that here. 20, 100, 300, 400. Okay, I'm clean. I'm clearly reading my file. I'm clearly able to get data. Time to move on. Um, these little tricks of stopping and testing and stopping and testing and stopping and testing will save you a lot of trouble. If you try to write all the code and then test, you will eventually succeed. Um, but eventually is a very long time, and you'll also get extremely frustrated. Take little wins and celebrate them. I'm happy I opened my file. I'm happy I'm read. I'm going to do a little nerd dance of joy. All right, so now I'm going to do the math. I'm going to count my batting average. Now I'm going to use the Little League formula for this, okay? And I'm going to do some typecasting here, some simple typecasting. So simple calculation, again, little league calculation, at-bats minus walks under hits. Um, you can't have at-bats minus walks like I would have here, because 100 minus 100 means 0. And that, of course, you can't divide by 0. So that's the logic. Let's actually calculate it. So I'm going to say... And I'm going to use the proper way to cast in C++. And then I want to see these. I'll get mm, okay output. I'll make it look better in a couple minutes. <laughs> so 
15 gets 0.25, 21 is 0.3, batting average 0 0.08, 0 0.108247, and 99 has infinity. Uh, that's because I'm dividing by zero, so I need to fix that, and I need to fix the output to make it look better. Let's fix the outputs first. That's the easy one. I want this batting average to display with zero or three decimal places. So I can do this. Set position three and fixed are IO manipulators. They come from IO manip. There are many modifiers that you can throw into your code. You can set widths on things, you can set fill values. I do a run. Oh, what I miss? Oh, so I had the, that IO manip highlighted. Try it again. Run. And look at that, it works perfectly. Now, this line of code is actually sticky. What that means is I don't have to do it inside the loop. I can do it up here. I can do it way up at the top. And it will turn on for all of my double outputs. Nice, easy way to get three decimal places. And some of these manipulators are fixed and sticky like these are. Others aren't. Your book will do a really good job describing those. Uh, but now I need to fix infinity. And that's going to happen if at backs minus walks is zero. So I'm going to if it. So if at bats minus walks is greater than zero, I'm going to do the math. Otherwise, If at bats minus walks is somehow less than or equal to zero, I'm not sure how you'd have more walks than at bats. Um, I don't know, but I'm just checking it. I would set my batting average to zero. Now you might wonder why I didn't just else that. Um, the reason is because you really should, as a programmer, physically test each possible condition and leave the else for something really weird to happen. It creates some type of error message. Uh, when I write code professionally and I send it out to my clients, my else clauses all say the same thing. A dialog box pops up and says something really odd happened. Call Lee Cottrell at. And every now and then my phone rings and they say uh, something really weird happened and the box popped up and asked me to call you. <laughs> and then I figure out what program they're running and I see if I can reproduce the error. This else should be for the world is ending. You should pick up every possible condition or if else statement. It's a much safer way to code. All right, so let's see what happens when I run this. Perfect. Player 99 has a batting average of 0, 0.00, which is what that player should have. Okay, so in this particular program, you learn how to read one way to read from a file. It reads from a perfectly structured file. You keep reading until you get to the end of file. You learned how to open a file. You learn how to verify that the file was opened, and then you learn how to close the file. And you also saw an if statement in action and some simple math. Incidentally, if you forget, just cast it. Everybody equally sucks. So you don't want to forget that. And that's because, you know, integer divided by integer can't give you anything double. It would be zero. So that's cast, double puts it back in. All right. Thank you. Good luck.